This is lecture four of psychopharmacology, psychology 6700. I'd like to talk about pharmacology, um, what happens with drugs and how they work. Now there are two broad important concepts, pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics. Pharmacodynamics are the drug's effects on your body. Pharmaco Kinetics are the body's effect on the drug, how the body processes the drug. So let's start with pharmacokinetics, the body, body's effect on the drug. Now there are four things that the body does to a medication when it enters the body, or the four things to consider. The first is absorption. So how does the body take the medication in. Now if you're taking a medication by mouth, uh, it needs to go through the gut. So it's generally absorbed through the stomach and the small intestines. Uh, absorption can be affected by things like whether you've had a meal or not. A lot of times on medication bottles it'll say um, uh, take with food because it needs that additional buffer. Absorption also considers things like the blood-brain barrier. Many things are filtered um, so that they don't get into the brain. Um, your body's built like that to keep toxins out, but that needs to be considered with the potency uh, and the nature of certain medications. Uh, the next thing that happens to a medication is that it's distributed through the body. Uh, so that's considering where does it go, where does it end up, where is it stored. So a lot of it gets into your bloodstream, but other parts of it is deposited uh, in the organs, in muscles, in fat. After someone stops taking the medication, those deposits remain, continue to uh, leach out into the bloodstream. So uh, the, the, the function of a medication depends a lot on how it's stored, whether it's fat soluble or water soluble and uh, to, to what degree it's stored in organs. Biotransformation is another component. Sometimes that's called metabolism. That's how the body actually processes the medication. And that's done primarily by enzymes that are found in the liver. Now interestingly, some medications depend on metabolism because what's active is the, not the original medication, but actually a metabolite of the medication. And then finally, the medication is excreted. This happens through sweating it out, but it mostly happens through the uh, kidneys. Now, excretion is related to two other important concepts, half-life and steady state. The half-life of a medication is the amount of time that it takes for the serum concentration of it, the amount of it that's circulating in your body, to be reduced by 50%. Steady state is how long you need to be on a medication before the amount you're taking equals the amount eliminated. Uh, so when you're on continuous medication, uh, generally for it to reach its therapeutic level, it needs to reach that steady state. A rule of thumb, steady state is reached after about four half-lifes. So let's think about an example. Caffeine, the half-life is about four hours. So if you go out to Starbucks, get a grande coffee, it has 320 milligrams of caffeine, which is actually quite a lot. Uh, after five hours, it's going to be half as much. You're going to have 160 milligrams. It'd be the equivalent of taking 160 milligrams at that point. That's how much is going to remain in your body. So you go out and get a Starbucks coffee at 9 a.m. Uh, at midnight, you'll still have 80 milligrams of caffeine in your bloodstream. Now, drug interactions are another very important thing to consider. Drugs can't be just considered individually, and this is why it's very important for 
someone to be coordinating uh, a client's medications. A lot of times clients will go doctor shopping, they'll get a few drugs here, a few drugs there. Uh, you can even order drugs over the internet and um, a physician who never sees the patient, uh, sometimes they have a brief history form to fill out. So patients can be getting drugs from lots of different places with no one coordinating it. Um, the, sometimes pharmacies take on that role, look at the list of medications, but of course if you're getting medication over the internet, there's no pharmacist to, to check it. So drug interactions are very important. It's very important to review clients' medications and to know where they're getting them and to know um, you wouldn't necessarily be responsible for uh, attending to interactions, but at least to understand that someone needs to be. And drug interactions occur because one drug affects the kinetic properties of another. So absorption, distribution, meta metabolism, and excretion, one drug can change the way the body um, processes another drug. Um, if you remember Pepto-Bismol ads, they used to show a stomach being coated by Pepto-Bismol. Well, that's an example of uh, a drug that would affect absorption because if your stomach is coated, it's not going to absorb another drug as well.